So how many of you can think of a song right now that if you heard it, you would be transported back to a specific time in your life and you feel exactly the way you felt back then? That many of us would. Well, when I turned 30 years old, I was diagnosed with cancer. And as a musician, I began to write songs about it during my experience. It was very cathartic for me. They were very raw and honest and captured the emotions I was feeling at the time. Eventually, it became a full musical about my experience. And later on, after I'd survived my ordeal, I was performing the musical. And one of the actors in the show came up to me and said, you know, you really ought to think about using this show to uh, teach healthcare workers about what it's like to be a patient. And a few years later, that's exactly what I did. It has been so powerful that it became my passion. I now use stories and music to teach others compassion, wisdom, and joy. Let me tell you my story. So this was me prior to having cancer. Life was good. My wife and I were talking about starting a family. And then on my 30th birthday, I discovered a lump where no man wants to find one. And soon I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. It's, it was devastating. I was shocked and scared, especially since my father died from cancer less than a year prior to that. It's hard to describe what it's like to be told you have cancer but I'd like to demonstrate two different ways to do so. First, what do the experts say? Well, the Mayo Clinic says that some people say they feel afraid, anxious, and overwhelmed. The National Cancer Institute uh, says that it's normal to feel as though your life is out of control. And the Journal Oncology says that a patient's reaction is typically a combination of fear, despair, and anger. But I would like to demonstrate a different way to describe what this is like. Everything was fine. Everything was good. Now there's only rubble where great buildings once stood. My life had changed, lost my footing, my bearing, the pages of my life neatly written now, are tearing, how could this be? I had no reason to believe that this could happen to me, the world I once knew. The true and the one that I'm left with is so frightening to see. How could this be? How dare this be the case? What call to mess with me? I've never hurt another beast not intentionally. What nerve of him to enter my peaceful little town? He's come into my life and turned it upside down. I am hurt, I am bitter for the life.
did you think of the difference between the two? Do you think that um, which one would make you feel more compassion or empathy? And which one do you think you would remember longer? So my story continued. After I was diagnosed, I needed to be, uh, get a CT scan to see if the cancer had spread. And unfortunately, it looked as if it might have. So I needed to get a major surgery, which had the potential side effect where I might not be able to conceive children naturally. So I made a few deposit at the uh, fertility clinic and went in for the surgery. The surgery was, uh, they had cut me from the top of my abdomen to the bottom, open you up, take out all your organs, cut out the lymph nodes in your back, put your organs back in, sew you up, and then you spend a week in the hospital learning how to walk, eat, and go to the bathroom again. And it was the worst week of my life up until that point. I uh, made it through that week, and then my doctor came to visit me and told me the great news that there was no evidence that the cancer had spread. I was thrilled, and I could go home, and all I had to do was go for some regular follow-up visits. But at this point, I found out that I, had my, uh, uh, I did get the side effects where I could no longer conceive children naturally. And I was missing parts. I had definitely changed. Everything in my life had changed. And I felt as though my manhood had been challenged. So for the first time in my life, I grew a beard, but not like the scruff I have today, a big old Grizzly Adams beard, which nobody else liked, just me. So eventually, better heads prevailed and I trimmed it. But that still wasn't good enough. So I cut off my ponytail made my hair short, and I bleached it blocked. <laughs> I was a hit at the salon. People, uh, I freaked people out at work. And uh, even my wife liked to joke that it was kind of cool sleeping with this new guy. <laughs> but uh, then I went to one of those follow-up visits thinking it was going to be routine. And unfortunately, my doctor told me the terrible news that the cancer had spread into my lungs. So once again, I was devastated and now I was going to need another major surgery and likely chemotherapy. In the meantime, my wife had gotten in vitro fertilization and she, yep, it was successful and now she was pregnant. So here I was, a blonde haired, short, blonde, short haired guy who was about to come become a father and the cancer had spread it one more time. So my life was upside down. The uh, next surgery, uh, they removed a third of my right lung. And I remember waking up in the intensive care, uh, in intensive care, and I started to count all the wires that were attached to me and the tubes that were coming in and out of me, and I gave up at 30. It was another long week in the hospital, and then when I was done, I had to start the first round of four rounds of an aggressive chemotherapy. I still was struggling with my manhood, so I preferred to call this my shock bite and gunshot wave. <laughs> but then I started chemo, and after the first round, I could easily pull my hair out, and uh, so I buzzed it all off. And then soon I had lost all of my hair, and eventually I had spent over three months of my life through chemotherapy, I was sick, in pain, sometimes excruciating pain, and nauseous 24-7. I would gladly take another surgery over chemotherapy any day, and I felt a little bit of what it might be like to be dying. At the same time, my wife was having, you know, morning sickness, so she was nauseous, I was nauseous. We were the real power couple. Everybody wanted to be around us. But I'm happy to say, after a long, grueling summer, I made it through, and all of my CT scans have been clear ever since. And I am still reluctant to use the word cured. I much prefer the medical term remission. And speaking of medical terms, I was introduced to a lot of new medical terminology through all of this experience. A lot of strange words I'd never seen before, and a lot of things I didn't understand that I needed to figure out or to 
do what was best for, for my situation. Um, very difficult one, and I wrote a song about that as well. They say there's abnormality in my pathology oh, That belongs to some lady named malignancy They count my neutral fills and my basal fills I guess I got a whole lot that's filling me They wanna scan my cat, I mean what's up with that? They won't draw more conclusions till they find two more markers Lymphoma, blastoma, sarcoma, cytoma, carcinoma, leave me aloma. They wanna make me on my staging. I'm having such a blast for my phasing. They tell me I may need anesthesia, and I'll still be acute with alopecia. They think I get hyper when not plagia. It's all just freaking Latin to me. I have oncologists, radiologists, anesthesiologists, hematologists. I might get surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy. I need antioxidants, antiemetics, antibiotics. I once was a somebody, now I'm the antibody. Let's set sail from my new boat in search of a benign, no negative sort. I'm all on games like the freak. It's all just Greek to me. Yeah, whenever they speak, it's all just Greek and Latin to me. Thank you. So after that, do you think if you had to describe something that used a lot of crazy terminology to somebody that they may not know, that you might do it differently? I know I certainly do. doesn't have to be medicine. I work in technology, and uh, sometimes I feel like I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. So I definitely try to, to uh, make it easier on people I'm talking to. On to the good part of the story. Later that year, our daughter Clara was born. And three years later, through another in vitro fertilization, our son Elliot was born. And then I no longer had anything left. Uh, any deposit left at the uh, fertility clinic. Oh, we did have some frozen embryos left. We, we called them totsicles. And uh, five years later, we fought those out and had our son, Miles. My wife likes to call him our bonus lot. And this is our family today. You know, I begin and I close my musical with two versions of the same song called Life is Good. And in the beginning, the emphasis is on the word good, but at the end, the emphasis switches to the word life. Because no matter what life throws at you, now, if the moments are good or bad, happy or sad, angry or glad, it doesn't matter. I want to be there to experience it because life is good. So I hope that you've uh, seeing how stories and music can really bring compassion and connection about an experience that someone has had that you maybe have not. And uh, I hope that you'll use arts experiences in your own learning and perhaps in your work as well. Because in this time where we have individual devices and social media algorithms that are really efficient at separating us and dividing us. We need the power of stories and music more than ever to reconnect us through compassion, wisdom, and joy. The things that make a life good. I got jobs, but I got dreams. Tiny raindrops that make up streams. I got silence within sound. I get lost, but then I'm found. I got action along with thought. I get away with, but I get caught. I got random, though it's planned. A little spinning and a There's one thing that I got And that one thing means a lot Sometimes cold, sometimes
and life is